Hey guys, welcome to the Dead Island 2 review. This has been reviewed on the PS5 version. Now, before we get into the review, we have to acknowledge a couple of facts about Dead Island 2. One, this has been in development hell for years. Ever since the studio and the publisher got beef and separated, the series just has been like on let's say not solid ground but that's all I'm gonna say about that because the game is out it came out last year <laughs> last month and um, I had pre-ordered it because I loved Dead Island 1 and 2 was good also now since then a lot has happened in this genre we had uh, Days Gone we had different kind of zombie games but the one that really is linked to the, to the Dead Island series is obviously Dying Light. Now, if you have played De Dying Light 1 or 2, you will know something, which is the fact that it takes everything that Dead Island was, we're not including 2, because Dead, uh, Dying Light 1 and 2 came before this game. So, excluding this, it took everything that Dead Island 1 and Riptide was, Either one of the games, by the way, Dying Light 1 or 2. And they build on top of them. And especially Dying Light 2. Like, oof. You can climb skyscrapers. You can glide down from one rooftop to another. There's just so much you can do. And um, even though there were no guns, I believe, in Dying Light 2, they replaced that with different kind of bows which was interesting to me and obviously Dying Light also has the night and day cycle where at night it's more dangerous to be outside like you are really going to be careful but at daytime you're more free to explore now knowing this I came to play Dead Island 2 with the perspective that they obviously must know this also right so they're they're not going to be lazy. And <laughs> I was kind of wrong badly. That doesn't mean that this game is bad. And by the way, be ready for a long review. Go get yourself some snack. Maybe you want to eat some food, lunch, and you want to watch something while you're doing that. Well, congratulations. The next 23 minutes or so, that's what you get to do. Now, what you're seeing on your screen right now is me trying to join a multiplayer session. The multiplayer, in my opinion, is not that big of a deal in this game. At least wasn't for me. So I will only dedicate a couple of minutes for that. And then we're going to go into the game otherwise. So multiplayer is definitely fun if you have a friend who has the game. Or someone else, I don't know, relative, whatever. Somebody you know who has the game who has a microphone, a good connection, and you play together. Otherwise, mm -mm, don't even think about it. I joined about 10 games and um, <laughs> did not go so well. 8 out of 10 times probably the guy was just, or the chick, I don't know. The person whose game I joined was just idle most of the time. So obviously that cannot be too fun. And then... <laughs> I just left and uh, even then most of those sessions I would get the bad connection icon now two connections somebody actually was doing something one didn't have a mic but knew what he was or she was doing and I followed them and it had also a bad connection so the zombies were just lagging all over the place and I gotta say that was not fun now the one time that it went perfectly was when I joined the game, dude had a mic, we spoke about what we're doing, strategy, everything like that. In these types of games, that is what to be expected. But other than that, I would also say, because Dead Island 1 and Riptide were, you know, I would say challenging games, not hard, but challenging games, it was better to do it with other people online and we're going to get to the difficulty of this game shortly but i just want to touch lightly 
on that because the multiplayer aspect of this review which is that the game is so super easy that you don't need other people at all now I want to get into the main quests and the side quests we're gonna touch on these at two points of this review this is the first point we're gonna to touch at main story Eh, not all that and it consists of two different points now side stories the main side stories which are I believe 30 ish plus minus those are awesome the characters in them are awesome the writing is awesome the situational humor is awesome the dialogue humor is awesome sometimes it's over the top but once you get used to that, you know, you're enjoying yourself. You notice you're smiling when you're playing, you know, everything like that. Like, look at this scene. We just arrived here. We don't know these guys. This one guy has an issue and like the other guys are, you know, kind of getting pissed at him. And out of nowhere, dude gets his head just smashed. Like, boom. And then... He's still trying to smoke his joint or whatever, which obviously is impossible because he doesn't have a brain. But that's the over-the-top humor for you and the situational humor, whatever. It kind of like sets the tone for this game, I would say, this scene very perfectly. Like, look at this over here. These are two of the, you know, hard enemy types. Uh, the special zombies, you know, what? They're cold. And the specials, the thing about them is that at first, you will have some problem with them, but later on, not a whole lot. Now, the only situations where you might have a little bit of problem, like you saw here, I got knocked down once, is when there's several of them at the same time. But other than that, you really don't have any is issues. Other than that, the only enemy type I really would say gives you any kind of a challenge are these guys, the <laughs> riot gear guys. Riot Gear guys, their Riot Gear makes them harder enemies to kill than any other enemy type, even the Butchers, which makes no sense. Now, talking about Butchers, by the way, they are the guys with the blade hands, and they are the only enemy type that still at max level gives me like that feeling like, oh, it's going down when I see one of them. But other than that, every single special type is just a breeze and this is the part where we're going to go delve kind of into the difficulty of the game now as you're progressing through the game you will notice it keeps getting easier and easier and easier but how fast well for that we have to go all the way back to the beginning of the game so all the way <laughs> all the way back in the beginning of the game when you start the game, obviously you have a couple of choices. Such as, which character do you want to start with? I chose Danny because she had the best stats comparable to my playstyle. And uh, I was like, alright, so I will have less of these things, but more of these things. And I like to do these things, so I'm going to go with Danny. And immediately when the game started, I was like, oh my god, she has an Irish accent. And she sounded like a leprechaun, and I was like hating it. Also, in the beginning, for the first couple of hours, I was just getting like trash weapon after trash weapon, so I was like really fed up with the game. But then I kept on playing because I paid 70 for the game. And I will tell you this I am pleasantly surprised that Danny's accent, Danny's personality, and all that good stuff just grew on me. And what I heard about other players, um, their experiences is who have played with different characters because I've only played with Danny, is the fact that each character has their own way to react to any given situations. And these are not only in cutscenes, they are in all of the game. On any random moment, anything that happens. Maybe you check a random poster, maybe you kill a zombie, maybe something, maybe something. And they always have something to say. Usually something witty. But um, Danny's dialogue, it's cool. I like it. 
And Danny as a whole, you know, she really like grew on me. So I think that's good. When a game does something that in the beginning you're like, oh my god, I can't stand this. And then as time goes on, you really kind of bond with the character. I think that's a good thing. That, that means the game has achieved something. Now, with that said, let's go back to, into the difficulty aspect. In the beginning, you'll have gray weapons. And somewhere around level 10, which will take you probably, I would say, three hours maybe, four, three, four, something like that, hours of gameplay, depending on how much you do missions also, because they give you a ton of XP compared to killing zombies. So, the tier system of the weapons obviously goes, like most of these games, you got your gray or white or whatever, which is like the trash, and then... You got your green, which is like where the trash kind of ends, but still not great. Though at lower levels, it's great. Uh, all the way until level, I would say, 10, 12, blue is really good. But then you're like, when do I get purples? And you start getting purples, I believe somewhere above level 15, maybe like 16, I'm not quite sure. And um, But somewhere around there, like 15, 16, maybe even 14, depending on your luck. But um, yeah, then you start getting the purples, and what is after purple is yellow. You want those legendary weapons, and guess what? You only get legendaries, or at least I got my first legendary, when I was literally few XP's away from level 29. And the max level is level 30. So you get to the legendaries, when the game is almost over so that sucks a lot of the enjoyment out but as you can see with purple you pretty much kill everything that moves so any challenge there was in the game until level maybe 15 or something is just gone once you get into those purples you're a killing machine there is no difficulty to speak of especially if you're the kind of player who knows what they're doing you gotta at, you don't even need to have a high game IQ, even a mid, is more than what you need. Like let's say the bodybuilder types, what do they do? They do the punch and they do the ground smash. Well, it's very easy. Move backwards. Like, <laughs> just to specify what I mean, how easy this game is, it has a counter and a block. And I have used neither. Ever. I just simply move back don't even use the dodge button and I barely get hit even by the specials and like when a bodybuilder does the AOE ground smash all you have to do is just jump up and you dodge it and that gives you ample time to even charge your attack and hit it not just to hit it but like charge your attack and hit it sometimes even twice and uh, as you get to those purple tiers, you will kill a bodybuilder with like three strikes. Now, if you get two bodybuilders or a bodybuilder and a screamer, let's say, or a vomiter, sure. But even then, you start very quickly understanding AI and also understanding their moveset and understanding like what works to what. And if you're smart, you will obviously have all weapon types which means you will have uh, a blunt weapon a cutting weapon all kind of guns we're talking about pistol shotgun rifle nail gun you know you'll have all of those and to each one you will obviously put like one is electronic uh, excuse me electric one is fire one is like corrosive one is bleed, which bleed really not that necessary. But um, my most favorite is force. When you put the impact, which is the mod, onto a force weapon, which gives it even more force, you're just playing golf with these zombies. Like, I breeze through this game. Ever since level like 14, 15, I've been just breezing in this game. And even before that, I realized, like, technically speaking, all you need to do against the regular zombies, which is most of the zombies you'll meet in the game, 
is just crouch, hit the legs. You got a regular zombie, crouch, hit the leg, you, you will send it flying like you're playing, I don't know, golf. <laughs> and then when you get like um, a runner that's supposed to be like, oh, this one, you know, he will chase you forever or she. Yeah, guess what? Don't charge, hit the leg. Because you realize very fast, that, ah, so the AI has been set so that if you charge attack, they will dodge. But the AI has not been set so that if you do a light attack, it will dodge. We'll just do the same thing to the leg. Listen, if you go with a blunt weapon to their knee or shin bone, they're done. Their name is runner, not crawler. So one-legged, all they can do is crawl. Done and done. Screamer, very scary in the beginning, especially the electric type screamers. But then guess what? Couple of grenades, or even one grenade, stun it, go finish it off. Very fast job. And the only one that, like I mentioned, even now at max level, I get any kind of stress about, even for half a second, is when I see a butcher. Because then I'm like, alright, serious mode. Let's get the auto pistol. And I'm shooting like 30 bullets in one and a half seconds to it. Like, drrr, dead. But I do have to do that. So I have to like kind of take my mood like from we're just, you know, <laughs> breezing through this world to like, oh, okay, serious time. And then it's back to the breezing mode. So it doesn't have that difficulty that the original game had and even Riptide. In most of this game, if you're even half good of a player, you will breeze through it. I can guarantee you that. And the game gives you everything you need. If you have a good weapon, you can upgrade that weapon in level as you go. So let's say you have a level 19 weapon, you go to level 20. Well, congratulations, right, you can, you know, bring that weapon with you to the next level. Just pay like 15, 20,000, depending on the weapon's level. And you got it with you. And I think that's actually a really good thing. Because then you don't need to discard weapons. And uh, it's something that I enjoyed. And I would recommend. Now when it comes to different weapon types. Uh, there are plenty of weapons. But I wouldn't say a great amount. I think they could have done more. Like for example. They could have put nunchakas or something. That had been cool. Put some blades on those nunchakas. Or some like batteries or something like that you know what I mean uh, but there's a good amount and when we go to the legendaries the thing I like about the legendaries is that each one has a specific look so this is for example a shotgun but it looks nothing like the typical shotguns in the game because there's basically three type of shotguns you got the regular pump action you got the auto and then you got the short shotgun that I think that's those are I believe the only three types. So the legendary is all you they they look unique. So that is awesome. But on a huge minus side, what's the point when you only get to enjoy the legendaries in the last couple of hours that you're playing the game before like reaching max level? And once you get max level, I mean what is there really to do? I mean I want to get really into this statement because what is there really to do is not necessarily something negative, but is also not positive. They capped the level at 30, so which means you will not get XP from killing zombies, you will not get XP from finishing quests, though even though you get XP, but it just does nothing because you're max level and you can't receive that XP, right? Now, however, the side quests are still there. So, if you finish the game and uh, you're even max level, doesn't matter. You can still continue playing the game after you finished it. And I think that also is a plus because it gives the game more life. You don't need to restart with another character and then do the side quest that you haven't done. But, it's not a perfect system because... You might need to do a lost and found mission, like this one you see right now is active. And once you do like that, then that might open a new side quest. And they're all locked behind each other like, 
like a row of domin like dominoes, you know. If you do a main quest, it's it opens side quest and last and found quest. As you do last and found quest and side quest, it opens more side quest and last and found quest. But they don't just all come out. And as you can see here, this is what I was talking about. At this point, I finished the game, but it allowed me to still continue, which made me really happy at that moment because for a second there, I was scared like when the you know, credits came that, oh, don't tell me like this is it and I have to start with a new character. But no, I got to continue the game and I had still a lot of fun. And at the moment of making this review, I think altogether I'm like 85, 6 let's say six seven maybe percent done with the game and that means like collectibles everything you know like main story done uh, the bigger side story things side quest I mean uh, which have the blue marker those are I believe 90 something percent done and last and found I think about 70 something percent done and few collectibles, I think collectibles I'm about 80% I've found everything, at least 70 something. So I've spent a good time before making this review. I played the game about 40 hours and I would summarize it like this. In the beginning it was tedious, boring, I didn't care as I kept playing. Shortly few hours later I started to realize that hey this is not that bad. A few hours later, I was like, hey, you know what? Oh if you actually don't take it so seriously, this is really fun. And then you meet the side characters. Then you meet these NPCs with great dialogues. And you realize, hey, you know, sometimes if I don't even interact with them and I'm just stationary, don't do anything, just listen to them talking to each other is such a blast. But in the world itself, there is really, like, there, there's nothing to do when you leave these guys. You just go out, you kill zombies easy, and then it can get tedious when some of the lost and found missions don't have any indicators. And I do appreciate the fact that you have to do like investigating. Oh, yeah. You have to actually read the journals. But how about make those a little bit easier, just like 50%, and make the difficulty of fighting the zombies like thousand times harder. I think that's a good exchange. 50% harder for the lost and found just to keep on track with the missions and then make the zombie fighting like thousand, thousand, five hundred times harder. I don't care. It will at least give us a challenge. But by any means this is not a bad game. I believe in summary that they have done a good job bringing, <laughs> bringing, bringing a series that was almost dead to be honest because of all the delays and um, they didn't fail. Do, did they succeed? Well that's to each to their own. In my opinion this game is not bad, it's not great, it's good. So if you buy this let's say Currently, it's priced around 70. <sighs> Might be too much. Might be too much. Especially if you're not a fan of the series. But if it's on sale for like 40, definitely try it. At least. Now, with that again said, I would give this game, as a reviewer, an 8 out of 10. I think 8 out of 10 is really good for this game because this game is a perfect example of 8 out of 10. And we got two other releases now, huge releases. Redfall is just a hot mess. And the new Star Wars game is also mostly a hot mess. So in that sense, I will tell you this. The voice acting, awesome. The writing, awesome, except the main quest. Uh, the world, as you can see right here, funny. I like it. This game does a lot of things right, but it could have done so many things better. That's my issue with it. A lot of potential loss. But I think they can continue this on Dead Island 3. So I hope you like this. Have a nice day. Peace out.